prosperity in the housing market. So I want to start off with a uh, book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 2. <clears throat> Proverbs 29, verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked heareth rule, beareth rule, I'm sorry, the people mourn. Yep. So it's our job to try to get back in authority because this oppressor, Esau, Moab, you know, really all the other nations, they got the, you know, they got the economy in a bad, in a bad state. You know, it's only really benefiting them. Um, you know, not even all of them, just really the top, you know, top 5%, top 1% of the only people that's benefiting from the economy being the way it is. Uh, give me Ecclesiastes uh, 7 and 12. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 12. For wisdom is a defense and money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is, but the excellency of knowledge is, that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Yeah, so we, we need to study these scriptures and get this wisdom. But you see, it also said money is a defense. So, you know, we need money, you know, to be able to survive in this world. And, uh, you know, like I say, our oppressor, he's taking all them, he's finding ways to take all our money. Uh, let me get Proverbs 13 and 22. Proverbs 13, verse 22. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So that's what we're trying to accomplish. You know, we're supposed to be able to leave inheritance for our children, but you know, if you like me, then you know, most of us not go get no type of inheritance from our, from our parents. You know, it's because you know, you look at the top one percent, top five percent, all of them, they don't they get there because they don't start off from scratch. All most of us have to start over from scratch. And, you know, the world not supposed to, you know, it's not supposed to be that way. So um, read that last part again. <clears throat> a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So, you know, when we bear rule, we're going to be acquiring the wealth of the sinners, for the wicked. Uh, let me get Deuteronomy 28 and 12, verse 12 to 13. Deuteronomy 28, 12 and 13. The most high shall open, shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. So we're supposed to be lending to the other nations, you know, but it's it's the other way around. How many black owned banks is it that you know of? One in Detroit that I know. It's one out of how many? So, you know, clearly we're not lending to nobody. You know, we're doing all the borrowing. So keep going. And the most high shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the most high God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. So we need to turn back to these commandments. So we can be the head and not the tail because we are the tail in everything. We the lowest on the totem pole on every single statistic. Uh, let me get a um, get an article. Name of this article is rent rose five times faster in 2021 than in 2020. This on CNN.com. This was written January 26th. Rents are continuing to rise across the US. The cost of rent on average was 10.1% higher in 2021 than in 2020, growing five times faster last year than it did in the first year of pandemic, according to Realtors.com monthly rental report. By December, national rents had the sixth straight month of double-digit annual increases. The national median rent for a one-bedroom in December 
was $1,651, up 19.3% over the year before. But many large cities saw rent surge even higher, led by Miami with a median rent of $2,850 in December, up a whopping 49.8% from last year. Miami was followed by Tampa, Florida, and Orlando, which both had annual rents, rent growth of 34% or more. With rents already at a, high, at a high and expected to keep going up, rental affordability will increasingly challenge many Americans in 2020, said Daniel Hill, Realtor.com's chief economist. Rents tumbled during the beginning of the pandemic in 2020, but they flattened out in early 2021 and gained momentum throughout the year. Rents hit a double digit yearly pace by summer and continue to rise through the second half of 2021, according to the report. So, you know, you got rent going up 30 and 40% in certain places. You know, how, how can you keep up with that? You know, you sure ain't getting 30 and 40% more pay. <clears throat> you know, and this is just rent. This ain't even including, you know, Everybody know the price of food is going up, gas went up. You know, everything is really up. I think with inflation, 9% this year, I suppose. <laughs> Let me get one, another article. This is uh, Yahoo News. Uh, two reasons why rent prices are so high right now. For the first time during the pandemic, Rents are rising faster than home prices as would, as would be buyers get priced out of the market. Here with, with this outlook, John Ziegler, CEO of rentpal.com, welcome to the show. You know, two years ago, rent prices were at bargain basement prices, which has changed since then. And do you think that rent prices have peaked? John Ziegler, well, thanks for having me. And you're right, rent prices have continued to go up throughout the pandemic, and we're continuing to see that occur. Right now, vacancies are at an all-time low across rental properties across the U.S., and rental prices for one bedroom and two bathroom homes have gone up on average across the U.S. between 16 and 21 percent. So, you know, everywhere it's going up. Let me skip down. There's two things going on. One is you've got a lot of folks that may be being pushed out of the housing market as prices have been increased. You also have a lot more demand for rental properties and the supply of rental properties has not been where it is. So pretty much they the prices of rent are increasing just because people are looking for houses living and no other reason. It's right there, supply and demand. Uh, let me get... Uh, Ecclesiasticus 26, uh, 28 and 29. 26, 28, 29. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiasticus 26, 28 and 29. There be two things that grieve my heart, and the third maketh me angry, a man of war that suffereth poverty, and men of understanding that are not set by, and one that returneth from the righteousness to sin. The most high prepare such such a one for the sword. A merchant shall hardly keep himself from doing wrong, and a huckster shall not be freed from sin. So um, you see that that with the author Sarek, he said it pains him to see a man of war in poverty. And you go see a lot of people in poverty, and you know, in the next coming years, the things keep going the way that they're going. And I read that last verse again. And a merchant shall hardly keep himself from doing wrong. And a huckster shall not be freed from sin. So that's what you see. The merchants of the world, they taking advantage of the pandemic. And, you know, they really ripping people off, charging you high. Because, you know, houses definitely ain't got no nice. You know what I'm <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, they just ripping you off. And a huckster is basically like a small time, uh, small time merchant. So let me get a uh, wisdom of Solomon, chapter two, verse one. Was the Solomon two and one. For the ungodly said, reason with themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious, and in death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known 
to have returned from the grave. See, so that's what uh, that's what the wicked are doing, you know, because they don't understand that, you know, we go come back in another life, you know. But um, they trying to get as much as they can get right now. They don't care, you know, who it affects, what they step, who they step on, how it affects the planet, you know. They just being greedy right now. Let's drop down to verse five, three five through nine. <clears throat> For our time is is a very shadow that passeth away, and after our end there is no returning, for it is fast sealed, so that no man cometh again. You see how they thinking, basically. That's basically yellow in the Bible. You only live once. We got to get it while we can. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present, and let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and and ointments, and let no flower of the spring pass by us. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place, for there is our portion, and our lot is this. See, so they that's 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 their whole thing. They don't have no spirituality. You know, they don't have no faith in the most high, no faith in anything. You know, they just get it while we can. It's all chrono thoughts. Let me get another, um, get another article. This is uh, CNN. The Fed is getting ready to raise interest rates. And this was written January 26th. The Federal Reserve is getting ready to raise interest rates the central bank said in its monetary policy update Wednesday, but it kept rates near zero for now. With inflation well above 2% and a strong labor market, the committee expects it will soon be appropriate to raise the target range for the federal fund rates. And the Fed, state, the Fed statement read, during the subsequent press conference, Chairman Jerome Powell confirmed that March is probably the right time Time frame to anticipate. So basically, the interest rate to purchase houses is going to increase. You know, I'm assuming it'll probably be a pretty nice little jump. Investors expect that timing too. Market expectations for a rate increase in March climbed above 95% following the Fed announcement, just below 90% before, according to the CME Fed Watch tool. Inflation continued to climb in the end of 2021, and economists expect to see the peak of this cycle in the early months of the year. The Fed's pressure measure of inflation rose to 5.7% in the 12 months in, ended in November, the fastest increase in the co consumer spending price index since July 1982. So we see inflation like we had never seen since 1982. Who when, was, it, was that Reagan that was in? in night? Yeah. So inflation is high as it was in the Reagan era. And I don't think nobody was happy, happy during the Reagan era. So, so th and this is uh, increasing on top of the house, the prices of the housing increasing. So not only will you not be able to afford a house, but if you could afford a house, you're gonna expect your interest rate to go up, which means you still can't afford a house. And if you can't afford a house, you gotta pay 30% more rent. <laughs> And taxes. I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> I, mm. Oh man. Let me get uh Deuteronomy 28 and 43 through 44. Deuteronomy 28, verses 43 and 44. The stranger that is within thee shall get above, get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee. And thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. See, it is. We we can't. We don't have no lending power. We know we just got to take. They increase the um, they increase interest rates. We just got to take. What are we gonna do? You know, but this that's part of the curses. Uh, go back to wisdom of Solomon. Uh, give me two and ten. <clears throat> wisdom of Solomon two verse ten. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us do what? 
oppress the poor righteous man. See, that's how they thinking right now. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. They don't care. You know, I don't care who. They don't care who. You know, we jacking these prices up. We don't care who it hurts. Oh, young, everybody. Uh, let me get Proverbs uh, 28 and 8. Proverbs 28, verse 8. He that be, by usury and unjust gain increases his substance, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. So, you know, when the Most High give us the kingdom, we're getting all of that back. <laughs> we're getting all of that back because this usury to the 10th power right here. Let me get another article. Show y'all just how much usury is going on. Uh, this is CNN. Um, billionaires added $5 trillion to their fortune during the pandemic. Yeah, and this was written January 16th. Billionaires added $5 trillion to their fortunes during the pandemic, according to Oxfam, exacerbating economic inequality as the pandemic pushed millions of people around the world into poverty. Using data compiled by Forbes, Oxfam says in a new report that the total wealth of billionaires jumped from $8.6 trillion in March 2020 to $13.8 trillion in November 2021 a bigger increase than in the previous 14 years combined. The world's 10 richest men saw their collective wealth more than double by shooting up by 1.3 billion a day. <laughs> so these 10 people making 1.3 billion dollars a day on average. Yeah, there's one Elon Musk. Elon Musk. <laughs> The report was released ahead of the World Economic Forum Online Davos Agenda, which will take place this week after the group's annual in-person meeting it was often delayed due to Omicron. Let me skip that. BNS have had a terrific pandemic. <laughs> Central banks pumped trillions of dollars into financial markets to save the economy. Yet much of that has ended up lying in the pockets of billionaires riding, hold on, let me read that again. <laughs> Central banks pump trillions of dollars into financial markets to save the economy, yet much of that has ended up lining the pockets of billionaires riding a stock market boom. So that's, that, that's where your stimulus of money went. Yeah. It just ended up falling its way right back up to, you know, all the billionaires in the country, the people that didn't need it again. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's how I was tied, though. Get this article. Uh, this next article is titled, The Pandemic Pushed Nearly 100 Million People Into Poverty. They're Struggling to Escape. And this was written December 26, 2021. She and her husband, Pradeep War, Roy, were garment workers in Bangladesh when the COVID-19 pandemic hit last spring, leading to mass layoffs at their factory. Like millions, millions of people around the world, both lost their jobs in the capital city of Dhaka, where they had worked for years, making pants, shirts, and jackets. And like countless other immigrants, they were forced to move home to the countryside to cut down on expenses. The World Bank estimates that 97 million people across the globe fell into poverty due to the pandemic in 2020, living on less than $2 a day. There have been, has been little improvement since. Globally, the increase in poverty that occurred in 2020 due to COVID still lingers, and the COVID-induced poor in 2021 continues to be 97 million people, economists at the World Bank said in a blog post earlier this year. They noted, however, that the overall poverty should go down this year. So if you're wondering where they got all this money from, stimulus, the poor people. That's who funded the billionaires increase, you know, they large, generous increase in their net worth. <laughs> Let me get first Tim uh, six, uh, seven through 10.
1 Timothy 6, 7 through 10. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall, fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You know, so, yeah, that was 10, right? Yeah. yeah, so, you know, you got a lot of Israelites, you know, in their pursuit of money, you know, they forsake the most high, you know, because they see how, you know, they see how well the, the top 1% live, you know. So, you know, of course, naturally you would want to, you want to get that, but you know, you got to keep your faith in the most high because you don't know what these people did to get that, how many people they stepped on to get that either. Uh, let me get Mark uh, 10, uh, 24 through 25. Mark 10, what? 24 and 25. Mark 10, 24 and 25. And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Yahweh Shah answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of Yah? I'll read that again. <laughs> Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of Yah? So, you know, if you trust in them riches, there ain't nothing wrong with having, you know, having, having some money. You know, we should have some money. But, you know, we can't trust in our riches to get us to, into the kingdom. We can't buy the kingdom. You know, we got to do what the most high say. Keep, keep going. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of Yah. Read that again. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of Yah. Like I said, I've been going over it. You see how they're getting rich. Like I said, on the backs of the poor. You know, where your chair? Where where's your where's your sympathy? Where's your compassion? Ain't nothing. Just, you know, we gotta take, we greedy. We want it all. Y'all can't have nothing. Get one more article. It's the last one, y'all. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Tired of this one. Uh, this is Detroit news. Detroit property values climbed 30%, marking fifth straight year of growth, officials say. Residential property values in the city climbed an average of 31% last year marking the fifth straight year of growth, Mayor Mike Dugan announced Tuesday. Officials said the figures are based on the review of the last two years of housing markets. In comparison, Detroit's value rose 8% per neighborhood from 2020 to 2021. Dugan said Tuesday that property taxes citywide are expected to go up 3% as long as you maintain your house. Over the past two weeks, 399,087 assessment notices were mailed out to homeowners. While property values have steadily increased in, Detroit, in the city, Dugan said homeowners are, projecting, are protected against large property tax increases because of voter approved constitutional change in the 1990s. Under state law, the annual increase in property tax is capped at the consumer price index of 5%, which is lower. The taxes get capped when ownership changes and are adjusted to the state. State equalized value the year following sales transfer. So now your property taxes gonna go up. You know. Let me get this for you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, this this article is from this is a personal uh, text message from uh, the Detroit tax assessors. This is called the property tax justice. This is from January seventeenth. Between 2010 and 2016, Detroit overcharged its residents by more than 600 million in property taxes. We are hosting a virtual forum on January 22nd with Council President Mary Sheffield to discuss how the city should compensate affected Detroiters. See, you basically hit the last half of my article. I ain't got to read it. Okay. So, um, oh. so yeah, you see, they they the city basically stole 
stole tax money from the average citizen. Uh, let me get Luke 19 and 1. Let me show you what we supposed to do, what they supposed to do if they made a mistake or on purpose, you know. <laughs> we know it's probably on purpose, but Luke what, 19? 19 and 1. Luke 19, verse 1. And Yahweh shot entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Yahweh who he was, and could not for the press because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a uh, sycamore tree. I'll skip the verse eight. Skip the verse eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm dropping down to verse Luke 19 and 8. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Most High, Behold, Master, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And how shall I say it unto him? This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. All right, let's do that. So you, you see what Zacchaeus did. He repented. You know, he talked to you how shall I repent it? And he agreed to pay back anything that he had stolen by fourfold. Uh, let me get numbers uh, five and six. So, you know, even in his, he, he, he's basically keeping the law. Because it's a law that we have to give. We take something, we got to give back more than what we took. You got that? Yeah. Numbers five, verse six. Speak unto the children of Israel. When a man or woman shall commit any sin that men commit to do a trespass against the Most High, and that person shall be guilty. Then they shall confess their sin, which they have done, and he shall recompense his trespass with the principle thereof, and add unto it the fifth part thereof, and give it unto him against whom he hath trespassed. All right. You see, you know, make a trespass, you got to give back at least 20%. Uh, let me get Exodus 22 and uh, 1. Exodus 22, verse 1. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. And yeah, see, this, this law saying if you steal something, in this particular case, an oxen or a sheep, you get a fourfold or fivefold. So that's where Zacchaeus got that from. He's keeping the law. So, you know, that's true repentance when you come back, confess, and then, you know, correct your wrong to the person that you committed it against. And, you know, you know the city of Detroit ain't gonna pay us back no four fold or even the 20%. They ain't gonna give us nothing. I doubt they give you anything, really. So <laughs> with that, I'll conclude this lesson.